crazy. And now I gotta try to sell Buffalo to a ten nine year veteran running back. Yeah, thanks to the last episode where you're like, Oh yeah, you know, we only played six games. By the way, my knees totally healed. I was like, Why am I making this phone call? <laughs> Well, I wasn't drafted, so that's the whole point. There'd be a reason why I wasn't drafted. I God, know. it's like buying a pallet of packages that didn't get, you know, that that couldn't get delivered from Amazon. You just open up each package. You're like, oh, what's this? There's a new 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 toy. I was gonna throw a little curveball at you, and I was like, what? But didn't Matt earn a second deal? <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you being so understanding of that domestic disturbance that I... Yeah, so you got to sell I gotta Buffalo sell to me Buffalo. as a nine-year... I don't know who you... What running back you think plays nine years in the NFL, so all right. That's fine. I'm a nine-year running back veteran. you got to sell Buffalo to me as the place to go. God, I don't even know if I can do this. I'm going to dug myself a little too big of a hole. But... All right, now I'm Brandon Bean. This is going to be fun. All right. <laughs> what face is that? I'm just thinking how how I'm gonna get through this. I'll tell you what. After nine years in the NFL, you know where I'd want to go? Not Buffalo. I want to go to Arizona. Not the Cardinals either. I want to go. No. No. The hell with that? Check team. out Mr. Rogers' home. Paul, oh, how you doing, Brandon Bean? Hey, Brandon. Uh, free agency starting, so I assume that's why you're calling me. Yeah, we're um, we're going over some of uh, the names that we have on our list of players we'd like to bring to Buffalo, and uh, your name's right at the top. Um, before we get started, before we go any further, I'm not going anywhere if they're drafting a running back. Let me just put that right out right now. Free agency is before the draft, so if I sign someplace, sometimes, you know, that I've seen that happen around the league, you sign a guy... I, get, I start getting ready, draft day comes, you drop a bomb on me, and now you expect me to help out this kid. L listen, right? I understand where my time is in the league, but if you're drafting the running back, I am not interested. Well, I will say this, though, Paul, and uh, I will be incredibly frank with you. Uh, the last two years, we went that route. Uh, we, we, picked up, we picked up Devin, we picked up Zach. Uh, we actually, the first year that we had uh, Devin, we, we brought in Frank Gore, as you know. Um, he was, he was a tremendous asset to our team in, in teaching um, Devin what to do with, within our offense, within the construct of our offense. Um, obviously, due to your time in the league, we're not going to need to do that with you. Uh, what we want to do is we want to bring in a veteran presence. Uh, we're not going to be drafting a, a running back this year. We want to bring up a veteran presence. I need 200 carries out of you. I need 200 carries out of you. Plus, the fact is, we're looking to open up our offense a little bit more. We know you got great hands coming out of the backfield. We know you're a locker room leader. It's been proven all over the NFL. I'm looking to give you a three-year deal. I mean, that's probably the best, better that you're going to get uh, around the league at, at your age right now. Um, but that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to expand our offense a little bit more, and we think you're the guy that can do it. Three-year deal sounds great, but, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, are, I need to know what that – what that payday looks like. Listen, I, I don't need numbers, right? But one thing that I do know is that if you if you don't give me a big signing bonus, a lot of times what happens is this is a one and done, right? I got I need to get paid. I need to get paid. You you give me that money up front, it makes me a little harder to get rid of. Listen, I'm an old dog. I get that, but you got to give me some money today. Like that's that's the way this. Well, I under, go. I understand that, Paul, and, and, and you know obviously you know. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're too familiar about the, with the CBA re renegotiated, but a man of your stature and your time in the league, um, we can give you a deal in which that we're not going to take the entire hit on our salary cap, which is which is another caveat to signing um, someone who's had that, uh, that that much experience in the league as you do. So, if you have a particular number in mind that you want. As far as a bonus, like I said, I need you for 200 carries. If I get 200 carries out of you, 
maybe we can you know we could discuss something along the along the roads but uh long long the way down the road but like i said initially in our conversation i'm looking for three years if i had for three years um in this offense working with josh um and another thing that you already know i don't need to remind you of this is your propensity to block uh in pass pro you know as good as you are in the open field catching the ball in open space and making guys miss you can protect josh and i need to keep him up right while i try to figure out this line situation listen i follow i follow the news i know what's up you're going to be changing offensive coordinators next year that's going to be what happens mm -hmm. right when you do that what's going to happen to me am i am i going to be gone are you bringing somebody up from within? Like, if Dable leaves, do I not fit anymore? Well, that's another reason why I'm making this phone call. You've been in three different offenses yourself. You know how the NFL is. You know how to adjust. You could be that guy that's not a one and done. You know, we we are very conscious of the fact that Brian not, may not be here next year. Um, we are very conscious of the fact that you've played in multiple offenses yourself and can adjust to that. And you will be rewarded accordingly because uh, that's what we do here. We do here for our players. Uh, those, those of you that uh, are able to come in, you're able to be a positive contributor. And I'm not even saying just 200 carries. I, I'd like you to do a little bit uh, on special teams as well if you're, if you're up to it. Um, if we end up going the route where Brian decides to go to greener pastures, uh, you'll have a job here in Buffalo in 2022. I'm awful at this. <laughs> you're actually really good at it. I just don't think you realize it. Because you chopped out every argument that I made. So you've, done, you've actually done quite well. Which is opposite of what I did, which I just threatened an undrafted free agent. That if he doesn't pick Buffalo, that he's going to pray that his phone rings for the 716 area code. Yeah, but that's that's part of what happens with these phone calls, right? You can't yeah. just go sign somebody. It just no. doesn't work like that. There's so many more. There's so many more because this is somebody's future. This is somebody's family. Yeah, they absolutely. need to make sure that the job they're going to take is the right one. And Buffalo is one an up and coming team, but two, like the players know that the offense is going to have to change sooner rather than later. Yeah, you know, like the time of having the same system for three years. That those days are numbered. Like mm -hmm. they're just they're numbered. Right? It's amazing that it happened. Yeah, it really is. Because yeah. he was, he got a call from Cleveland last year. Mm -hmm. He got some calls this year. You know what I mean? It's, it's, <laughs> that day's coming. Mm -hmm. Yep, it sure is. And That's it, why it, I made you a nine-year vet. I wanted to make you thirty years old. Well, thanks for that. Well, no, I mean, the guys, when they hit <laughs> their thirties, the NFL and everybody else looks at them differently. Yeah, they do. I know two two hundred carries is a lot though. For a 30-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coach, my back is sore. It's from carrying four franchises in my time in the NFL. I wonder how many carries Gore had when he was here. Because he did. He carried four. Away. He did? I got tired of seeing Frank Gore on the field. I got real tired of seeing Frank Gore. Real tired. Oh, my God. And then you watch Singletary, and Singletary, you know, gets six touches in a game, six touches for 54 yards, and you're like, what are we doing? I'm over on the sidelines doing the math. Like, <laughs> what? Can we, it's the, but then you run into the Christian Wade argument where Christian, the only time Christian Wade touches the football is when he scores touchdowns. Like, <laughs> that's, that's that's the so Christian funny. Wade argument, right? No, but I think that <clears throat> it was fun. It was fun to do that. But the, the, uh, the, the points that I was making were points that I actually want to have happen. I want them to expand the offense. I want them yeah. to involve the backs more. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to do that, that opens up so many more things. Now, I'm not. this is not a slight at Dable. It's not a slight at the offense. It's not a slight at Allen. It's not no. a slight at no. Singletary or Moss. It's just a simple fact. That the evolution of the offense has to be more versatile yeah. in order to, you know, if one part of the, of the engine isn't working, the other one could pick it up and, Go ahead. Well, I think that relays into the last episode of this week that I, I want to get into. And we kind of hedged on it a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think this episode is a great springboard to that point. Um, and the question that I'm going to ask you, and, and it, maybe it's not an episode, but you tell me, 
the Gabe Davis and Isaiah Hodges draft picks, right, were a stake in the ground of we're going to change the way that we leverage players in this offense, right? Because we went from, you know, John Brown and Cole Beasley, right? And then whoever was playing third wide receiver, like it was just, it was a collection of whatever guys happened to be on the team at the time, right? Like the third wide receiver at, you know, last year was, it was a nightmare, right? Or in 2019, it was this nightmare position. It was just like, whoever is breathing, can you run in a straight line? Great. You're our third wide receiver. <laughs> like that's what happened. Yeah. Right. But our Gabe Davis and Isaiah Hodges showing a change in trying to open up the opportunities for this offense. Because we talked about it before. The EP system is predicated on getting open. It's not about leveraging with size. It's not It's not about any of that stuff. You yeah. need shifty guys. So do, is the Gabe Davis and Isaiah Hodges pick, is that saying, listen, we understand we need to be a little bit more fit for future. And yeah. we're going to get guys that fit into a majority of offensive systems as opposed to a minority that the EP system is. A lot of teams try to put it in, and most of them fail. Most of the, look at the look at the look at the New England tree, right? Yeah, they don't really go. Look a at the lot offensive of coordinators that have gone places, or the offensive assistants who've gone places and tried to put that system in, and what happens to them? Two years later, they're back in New England. Yeah, right. Good point. Well, so, I mean, you had the king of the EP system there too, so that doesn't hurt. Well, of course not, right? But 